but we got a lot to talk about with this uh, Tennessee game, uh, third Saturday in October, and the Volunteers are smoking cigars, not Alabama, nope. after a game that, honestly, neither team impressed me. And neither no. team has impressed me the last, basically, month. Ever since Tennessee played Oklahoma – and Alabama played Georgia. I've not been impressed with either team. Both teams have off. They've looked awful. They've been playing terrible football for the most part. And the thing with Tennessee is that I feel like they have the ability to be a lot better. Alabama, I know, has the ability to be better than they are. The discipline's not there, and and, and they're not playing with the same effort and energy they did with the Saban era. But I feel like Tennessee is the same boat where they could be better than they are, but. Something's holding them back, whether it's the play calling or Nico not being fully, you know, ready for, you know, a, a complete offense yet or whatever. But neither team just looks all that good right now. But Tennessee came out on the right side of it. Yeah, and neither team looked very disciplined either. Because, matter of fact, Alabama had 15 penalties and Tennessee had 11 penalties. And and I know last Saturday and last week's post game with Johnny Burtz and myself. Uh, Johnny was talking about how jittery Jalen Milrow looked. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, he just looked like a disaster today. Jalen Milrow, I, the thing is, he doesn't have any pressure for his job, basically. Like, you got Ty Simpson, but nobody's like, okay, we've seen Ty Simpson. Every time he's come in, he's not looked that good. Now, obviously, he could get better, but the only way he could get better is reps and actually being out there on the field, which he hasn't. So, to me... I really don't think Jalen Milrow is any pressure for his job, even the fact that he's been playing poorly the last couple of weeks. His Heisman hopes are over. I mean, yeah. Alabama would have to win out, and he'd have to play elite football from here on out to even have a shot to get back in the Heisman race. I mean, he has been playing terribly. And like you said, when I look at him, obviously I've seen quarterbacks that have been cool, calm, and collected, like Jalen Hurts. He was like the epitome of cool, calm, and collected when he was at Alabama. He still threw interceptions. But Milrow looks shaky. He looks nervous. He looks like, you know, the season and the environment and, and everything going on right now, it's getting to him. And you can see, like, Malachi Moore on the sideline on that last drive before they went out there. Like, he's trying to – pump Jalen Milrow, Jalen Milrow up like, hey, you got to, you know, go out there and play like your old self, like you did last year after, you know, the Texas game. You didn't play well, but then you got better from that. You know, so I don't know. I just feel like, you know, Milrow is, is, is definitely not showing, you know, the same signs he showed last year of an improving quarterback. He's regressing. He is playing, you know, a lot worse than he did before. And he definitely does not look composed. And, and I, I think uh, LW's comment is is definitely a great point here. The gaslighting by some fans and media has to stop. Koji Staff is hell-bent on making Milrow Penix. He's not. Bama threw the ball over 40 times. Well, I, I mean, the thing is, is that, that that's a good point. Like, I, I believe Milrow's better in space. And there he's throwing way too much out of the pot. So, I mean, like, do you think, like, Milrow is a great pocket passer? I don't. I don't think that he no. is. I think that he is better when he's in space and he's able to run the ball. They're not utilizing him very well, obviously. And I know that Andrew the Goat is, I, I agree, the season's in trouble. And he says uh, no playoffs for Alabama this year, sadly. If um, Alabama wins out, they'd still make the yeah. playoffs. Yeah, so, yes, he, he said, can Alabama make it with two losses? Yes. If Alabama beat LSU, Oklahoma, and Auburn, they would get in at 10-2. and two. But if they lose again, then they're done. Well, I can go ahead and pull up the rest of the schedule. So, we got Missouri. It's um, not even a give me either. Yeah. I mean, M Missouri's been a sloppy team all season. And... I'm really, at this point, I'm not liking our chances against LSU. No, I'm not either. I mean, I, if I was picking that game right now, uh, you know, I, I would pick LSU. Like, if someone made, like, Jeffrey, you you have to pick that game right now. I'm picking LSU. Now, that could change based off LSU's performances the next couple weeks. And, you know, and if they play better against Missouri, then maybe that, that will change. But... As of now, I would pick LSU. Uh, Le Emrock says wrong. 
I don't know if he's saying about if Alabama getting in at 10 and 2. Alabama would get in at 10 and 2. Right now, they're okay. ranked 7th. They just lost a close game to a team that's going to be ranked in the top 10 tomorrow. Alabama probably falls to 12 13. You're telling me you beat Mizzou, you beat LSU, you beat Oklahoma, you beat Auburn that you don't get back in the top 10? Yeah, you're getting back in the top 10. Alabama would make the playoffs with two losses. The problem is, is they're probably going to lose again. Maybe more than once the way they're playing right now. I mean, Oklahoma's bad, but Bama's not very good either right now, so they could lose. But LSU Ever. absolutely could be a loss. And, and even Missouri's not a give me, even though Missouri's no. not, you know, that good either. I mean, really, a lot of the teams in the SEC are just underwhelmed. Fun. Oklahoma's much worse. I mean, they got shellat today by South Carolina. But see, that like, makes that makes Tennessee look worse because Tennessee, when they beat Oklahoma on the road, it was such a great win. But n- now that you think about it, it's like, well, Oklahoma's pretty awful, and Tennessee barely beat them. So, and South Carolina should have beat Alabama. <laughs> yeah. So Alabama just survived on that one. I mean, they better be glad they didn't they didn't have the loss to South Carolina because they did, they would be done with the I mean, Auburn, I mean, Auburn's not exactly a gimme either, even though Auburn's freaking pitiful at two and five. Auburn I mean, usually sucks when they play at Bryant Denny, though, or now Saban Field. You know, like they, they they're not they're not as good. Oh, overlook Auburn. No, no, no. I would not overlook Auburn at all whatsoever, but uh, Auburn usually plays worse when it's at Alabama. But you never know; it's still a rivalry game. You can't take it for granted. But if it was at Jordan Hare, I'd be I'd be really nervous. LW says Milrow is zero pocket presence. Doesn't set on the pocket. One two three release doesn't exist. Watch the tape for each game. At least plays all over the field. Well, the thing is, so does Nico. And Nico's younger than Milrow, so a little bit of an excuse. But did you see that play, uh, Jackson, where two Tennessee receivers were open downfield and Nico threw it over one of their heads and it was actually the guy that had a tougher chance to catch it on the side? There was a guy wide open in the middle of the field. Yeah, he just completely missed him. It would have been a touchdown for Tennessee. Now, they ended up scoring a touchdown on that drive, but Nico missed one too. But did you see the one where uh, Milrow overthrew Ron Williams? Yeah. Dude, I, how do you miss that? I probably could There's make been that. A lot of now, could I make there. it in that environment? Probably not, but that was an easy throw. It's pitiful. It was pitiful. Pitiful. He, he overthrew Ryan Williams by like 10 yards. <laughs> I mean, he that, that was like an Anthony Richardson throw. Oh, God. It's like, now, now see, I'm that's really the thing. Not I, I think that out. Milrow, like, like the commenter said earlier, the, they're kind of having Milrow be like Penix. He's not yeah. Penix. Penix is a yeah. gunslinger. He he can do it sixty yards down the field, pinpoint a pass. Mill Rowe can throw a deep ball, and he has been accurate on deep balls before. But he's not as accurate over the middle. No. I thought he was getting better with that, but he's something's going on. He's getting rattled because he's not as he's not as accurate at all. And, and did you see also on the last drive that they had? It was on first and ten. He just threw the ball away, and there was an open guy on the flat. Again, yeah. That should have been an easy five, six yard completion and he overthrew him. I don't understand it. He's jittery. He's too jittery. He's scared and, and you can't be making plays like that when you're scared. You gotta you gotta be calm, cool, collected. You gotta make sound decisions. And obviously he's not making good, concise, sound decisions. He's just not. Yeah, and they're not disciplined either, like you said, fifteen penalties. It, that's no. insane. I mean, yeah, the last couple years of Saban, they were having more penalties, which is why everybody was going off at Saban. But at the same time, it's like, okay, uh, championship teams do not commit stupid penalties. They do not commit them on a regular basis at all. And Alabama's doing that. And they got an unconfident quarterback. And, and like LW said, year four, he's not getting better. He was better last year. Mm-hmm. And first half against Georgia. Something changed. I mean, he's not the same guy right now. I mean, he he doesn't look confident at all, and I'm sure he's going to start tanking on draft boards because oh, yeah. uh, you, you got to play well consistently for your, you to get drafted high. Like, you can't be playing this inconsistent. Anthony Richardson was, like, the only quarterback that ever got drafted as high as he did being that inconsistent. And, yeah, I still don't know how he got drafted fourth overall or whatever, or third Simple. or whatever he was. That, that 
simple the that? over the overheightment from yeah. Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, Mel Kuyper said, oh my god, Mel Kuyper. It's like, yeah, Mel Kuyper only watched one freaking game. He watched the it? one run against Utah. He watched Ooh. the one run against Utah that everybody's like, oh, Anthony Richardson for Osmond. It was one run, dude. He could not throw the ball five yards down yeah. the field accurately. Yeah, he has an arm, but he's inconsistent. Yeah, I mean, Anthony Richardson. I said that Anthony Richardson should have been drafted in, like, the third round. I mean, realistically, he, he – sh- like, the talent's there and all that, but the fact that he was drafted top five, I mean, that you're making the NFL draft just as broken as – college basketball where you take a guy like Bronny in the draft that averaged four points a game because of oh his dad but then oh uh a guy that you know averaged like 20 points per game uh is not getting drafted there was like five guys that were like like all Americans that didn't even get drafted last year but Bronny did okay <laughs> but you're gonna take Anthony Richardson in the NFL draft fourth and then he, he wasn't even good so I don't get it. I mean, Milrow should not get drafted high. You know, he, he shouldn't, the way he's playing right now. Now, he could still redeem himself, but all indications are that he isn't. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about, like, Alabama's defense? I mean, were you impressed with the defense, or do you think it was more so Tennessee's offense struggling? That's my opinion. I think it was more Tennessee's offense, but what did you what do you think about the defense? It, it was probably a little bit of Tennessee's offense struggling. And, you know, ten, Tennessee, they're probably going to look better than they should against, like, say, uh, Kentucky. But when they go up against Georgia, I don't think it's going to go so well for them. But it's a lucky thing that both Alabama and Tennessee don't have Texas this season. Because if either one of those teams had Texas on their schedule, we would be in trouble. We oh, yeah. saw what Quinn Ewers can do in Tuscaloosa. I do not want to deal with that again. I got another interesting question for you, Jackson. Do you think that Georgia losing or winning, like the result of the Georgia-Texas game, whether Georgia wins or Texas wins, which one do you think benefits Alabama more? I know Alabama's kind of out of the race right now with two losses, but the way I'm looking at it, I feel like if Georgia beats Texas, it helps Bama. Because then all the teams at the top would have one loss, and it, it, all Alabama would need is one more exactly. loss for those teams to get back in the conversation. Well, whereas if Texas wins, they're already going to be there. And then yeah. now you're playing with all these other teams. I feel like it'd be better if Georgia beat them. But. That's true, because like if Texas beats Georgia tonight, and uh, let's go ahead and look at the score update right quick. Uh, let, let me see. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, come. Okay, Georgia's winning 7 nothing. Okay, keep winning, Georgia. Keep winning, Georgia. You got to make us look good. <laughs> but, it definitely um, would help. I mean, hey, even though Alabama lost, at least at least they're not Florida State or uh, USC right now. Uh, can you believe USC lost to Maryland? Oh my there God! The like, way oh, they... Indiana beat Maryland. They're no the good. Way... Maryland's trash. USC lost to Maryland. <laughs> oh yeah, that and it's the way they lost to Maryland. Oh my God, that's bad. And I mean, like er- every game USC's lost mm. has been a close loss. That's bad. Oh, oh, well, we're the best three and fourteen in the nation. It's like, yeah, yeah that's you're, you're pulling right. the Nebraska thing, right? Like, <laughs> like, like that's what USC fans are doing. If you start saying we're the best three and fourteen, you're just Nebraska, a uh, three and nine all over again. And then the other embarrassment was Michigan. Well, oh. Michigan, Jack Tuttle, the former Indiana quarterback. Uh, that's a that's a cluster, man. Michigan's bad. Like they're, they're really bad, man. Four and oh, three. Man. I mean, if they didn't have that win over USC, but that's the, I don't even look good anymore. No, it was terrible. It, it's not even like it, like it don't even look good anymore, man. I mean, not good. No, I mean the it, USC win doesn't even look good anymore. So they're not a good team, man. No, it, it's like. I wonder how that makes LSU look because it's a uh, you lost to three LSU's four. gotten better since then though, right? Yeah, but uh, oh man, it's like well, they, to me, week one results aren't indicative of anything. That's why I don't think you should play week one games against high caliber opponents. I think you should have warm up games because I mean LSU clearly would beat USC right now. Oh, yeah. they clearly would. 
It's just USC got the better of them in that game, but then after that, they've been playing like garbage. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Michigan, though, man. I mean, Illinois is not a bad team, but remember, Illinois barely beat Purdue because they switched quarterbacks. 49. And then Oregon destroys Purdue, and then Illinois beats Michigan. I mean, Michigan might be like the 10th best team in the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it. They might be the 10th best team because, I mean, how many teams are ahead of them right now? Obviously, I mean, you got oh, Ohio yeah. State and Oregon and Penn State. And they has gone Wisconsin. from the top 25 tomorrow. Indiana's Uh-oh. ahead of them. So, uh, yep, you got, yep. like I said, you got Oregon and Ohio State. There's no, Penn there's State, no and Indiana. question. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question Indiana's beat Michigan. The only question left is can Indiana beat Ohio State? And that's pretty much it. Because, I mean, I, I feel I feel like it's getting to a point where it's like a foregone conclusion where we see Indiana in the playoffs. Like, I mean, although Tom Fornelli at Cover Three might not agree with that. I mean, he might think, oh, of not course agree. not. Just let, let them think they won't, right? Underdog story. You know, you, yeah. you, you don't, you don't want them believing because once they believe, then Indiana will lose. It's like, oh, this is why we shouldn't have believed in them. I knew it. So just, just Simple, have, Indiana's I mean, an underdog. They're an underdog. You know, they're, I, I they're love not that gonna get anywhere. Conference where he had where he was like, Simple, I win, Google me. I win, Google me, and Purdue sucks, and so does Michigan and Ohio State. And, and it's like Purdue really does suck. And Michigan's not much better. <laughs> I mean, it, it was like I said. Ohio on State's Ed, still good, but <laughs> like I said on Ed's last night, Ryan Walters. Is Daryl Hazel 2.0? Yeah, that's why I liked your tweet and retweeted it. It was like, hey, Indiana fans love to see this. Like, it's, <laughs> it's great. It's great to see the return of uh, Hazel, man, 2.0. It's, they're, they were terrible, like just absolutely terrible. But, although yeah, I mean, getting, means, although the price you have to pay is uh, you may have to see Indiana Purdue on Nickelodeon. After the latest SpongeBob rerun or the Patrick Star show. But, all right uh, with me. That's fine. <laughs> no, no, no one wants to see a, a bloodbath. No one wants to see it. <laughs> <laughs> that might get too violent for the kids, though. It's like, uh, mommy, what am I watching? Uh, something R rated. Uh, let me change it something nice. Nobody wants the Indiana smack and Purdue. That, that's too yeah, violent except the Indiana kids. fans. I mean, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's been years. And man. Tom Fernelli. <laughs> It's like, oh no, eleven and one. Indiana's in the playoffs over ninety three old Miss. <laughs> oh, they would complain about that. They'd be upset. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, give Indiana the, the just just this once. This is one thing, right? And everybody's like, oh, sick daddy's leaving. He's going to Florida, and I'm just like, no. No, no, no. You cannot have them. Just because your program is incompetent and can't hire a good coach does not mean you can steal ours. Come he's, on. He's no. 63 years old. This is he, like needs, he, needs to, he needs to stay at the team that gave him his break. Florida didn't think nothing of him until he's at IU now. I mean, all these Florida enough. fans. I mean, I got nothing against Florida, Florida fans. They're like, oh, he's our coach now. He's going to be. It's like, you should have hired him before Indiana did. You could have done it. Nothing was stopping you. Nothing was stopping you. You oh. said James Madison. You could have hired him instead of Billy Napier. But you know what you did? You're like, Signetti. We don't know Signetti. Uh, we're we're on Billy Napier. He's a proven product. And it's like now the Signetti's at Indiana, and it's like, oh, we want him that. No, you can't have him. You can't have him. You don't, you don't deserve him. That's all. I, you don't deserve him. That's all well, I can want, say. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't normally say fire. things like this, but really, Florida does not deserve Kurt Signetti. No. No, because they they'll be like, oh, we love him. Squee. And then it's, uh, we want him fired. We want him fired. Yeah, he like, goes like eight and four, and they want him fired. I mean, come on, man. I mean, like, Signetti, if he stays in Indiana and wins some bowl he games will. and has some success, they'll build a statue of him outside the building. Florida will just, you know, put his name in the garbage can. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll just, they'll just, they'll just toss up. I win Google and all that stuff and just been the, put in the garbage can. I, I just, yeah, Signetti. I hope he stays in Indiana. I mean, if he does leave, I mean, I won't 
you know, I'll be happy that, you know, he getting a bigger opportunity or whatever. But and for what he did at IU while he was here, but I hope he stays. Though. I, I just the fact that oh, Indiana yeah. seven and zero in his first season, and the fact people are already like, oh, we're gonna take him away and steal him <laughs> away. It's just it's it's kind of sad. It really That's is. Not, I, I hope he doesn't do it, and I hope he stays at IU, and I hope they give him a contract extension and he retires. I think at IU. He's kind of like Matt Campbell and Lance Leopold. I, I know it's kind. It's not too trendy to compare him to Les Leipold, but still, though. Yeah, before you know, this season, absolutely true. And I, Rough, Rough Rider's got a wish to make. This is what I'm saying, <laughs> Rough Rider. I understand, Love it. but is that fair? No, <laughs> like you hire Brent Venables. No offense, but you hire Brent Venables. That, that's I can't help that. Florida keeps hiring people that can't win. So, Indiana, they've been bad for 140 years. They haven't won a Big Ten title since 1967. They haven't won a bowl game since 1991. And the one time they finally get the hire right, you want to take them away. It's not fair. That is not fair. No. (laughs) Oklahoma, Florida, Florida State, no. None of you. USC, because I'm already seeing that. USC, no. No. Sig Daddy, do not fall for the LA lights. All right. The humbleness of Bloomington. I just <laughs> I appreciate you being a rough I'll tell you what, I, I, I could do it all night with them getting going. Just be like I I should have got popcorn, but it's like I knew I shouldn't have drank the coffee. Just be like, oh, just get some Coca-Cola, popcorn. There you go. But <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate your manner, Tim. He says, uh, give Tennessee some credit, great defense. I mean, honestly, I want to give Bama's defense credit and Tennessee's defense credit, but I really think it was just incompetency on both offenses, to be honest. I mean, Bill Rose out there missing Ron Williams. I mean, think about it. That that play where he missed Ron Williams, if he passes it to Ron Williams where he can catch it, all Ron Williams has to do is shake that safety, he's gone. I mean, you've got the the most like uh, Jeremiah Smith. Uh, Jeremiah Smith has the best body for a wide receiver as a freshman, probably ever, or at least this year. But when you're talking about explosive plays and the ability to create space and separation, Ryan Williams is the best receiver in college football, especially yeah. as a freshman, to be able to do that. And you're telling me all Milro has to do, he, he's got no one on him for like 15 yards. You hit Ryan Williams, he's either going for a touchdown or he's going at least to midfield, and he misses him by t- I mean, unfortunately, Ron Williams is no Hosman hope. None. No. Because Milrow is not getting not it to him. Year. He has no sure. Hosman hope. You, you have to be able to get the ball to be able to have a chance. I mean, like that'd be like Boise State having Ashton Genty, and they don't run the ball. Okay, how can Genty do anything if you don't hand the ball off to him? So, Ron Williams, he, he's at the fate of Milrow. He's at the yeah. fate of the passing offense. He needs the ball to be passed to him for him to do anything, or otherwise he's just dancing around out there doing nothing. I mean, it, sure. it, it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't help having Jalen Milrow shaky back there and missing easy passes. Like I said, it's really bizarre uh, how poorly – Jalen Milrow has played these past few games, especially when we saw him play well for like 10 to 12 straight games. It's not like it was a fluke. I don't think Milrow is a fluke. But I, I think it's the different offense, though. I think I think they're running a poor offense for him. Yeah. And like you said, and like LW said, they're trying to run him like he's Michael Penitz, and he's not. He's just not. He is nowhere near Michael Penitz. You, you cannot be making somebody that they're not. He's no pocket passer. Yeah, and it would kill me because I'd see a bunch of people. Oh, and and I, I don't diss media people, and I don't ever call out media people by name normally. I just don't really like to do that. It depends on who it is. But oh, yeah. I've seen so many media people say Jalen Milrow is a great pocket passer, and I'm like, what are you talking about? No, he's not. Like, really, the only time he's a good pocket passer is when he throws it, like, 80 yards down the field, and it's, like, the deepest bomb throw ever when he's all right. But or to, uh, to be a good pocket passer, you got to be like Curtis Rourke at IU, 
where you're in the pocket, you don't move, and you just throw. Drop in dimes, down the field, over the middle, up to the sides, downfield. Milrow is not that. Milrow is, is not capable of being able to stand in the pocket and drop dimes all over the field. Maybe an 80-yard pass downfield. I'm being a little exaggerated, but you know what I mean. 40-yard, 50-yard pass. But then a 10- to 15-yard pass over the middle? No. Especially in tight coverage. Because that last pass that was picked off was behind the receiver. So, yeah. gave the receiver no chance. No. I, I mean, because like, we, we have not... We did not have a good day today. It, it's like, uh, unfortunately... We deserve to lose. And I think, honestly, I'm hoping that this game will be a reality check for this team that, hey, we can get knocked out of the playoff race at any moment. We can get knocked out at any moment. Well, the thing that's so frustrating, Jackson, is because you're absolutely right. I mean, this should be a reality check, but that's what the Vanderbilt game should have been. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Like, they've had three games now where it's like, okay, you were blowing out Georgia. You look like the best team in the country. Then the second half, you played like garbage. And then Ryan Williams saves the day. And then you you squeak out a win. You get the big win or whatever. And then it's like, well, you turn back around. You play like garbage against Vanderbilt. And it's like, that's your reality check. That's uh-huh. your reality check. It's like, okay. Because, I mean, uh, you remember everybody. Thank you so much for that comment losers yeah alabama right now are losers that is, is rare in the last 20 years but th- thank you for stopping by and you're absolutely correct but uh but what what did you and johnny and most like we were and even i i picked like a 21 24 point win we were predicting like bama's gonna come back out against south carolina and and, and they're gonna blow them out because they're going to be angry off that loss. They're going to be like, you know what, Malcolm, we're going crazy, all that kind of stuff. It, it, they're, they're not going to let this happen again. They barely beat him. Should have lost. Yeah. And then this game. So if this isn't a reality check, nothing will be a reality check. Maybe they just aren't good. The problem is, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe this team's not good. There's too much talent. The problem is, they're not disciplined. And they're not showing enough effort, man. There's not enough effort. And the Nick Saban era, the amount of effort that we saw from some of these players to help them win games was unreal. I just don't see the effort. There's not a whole lot of it. it it's not good. Well, as of right now, a uh, score update. Georgia's 10 to nothing against Texas. Uh, that's making us look good in a way. But uh, lesson of the night. Don't ever put yourself in a position where you need someone to win or lose for you. Don't ever do that. Okay, yeah. John Warren. There we are. Our are member of Alabama with the Voice of College Football says <laughs> our defense, their feet look very looked heavy. They look slow. They're not keeping them off Jaden James Williams. Like, like man, yeah. it's not good. I mean, I agree, I and mean, definitely appreciate for being a member of the channel. But I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I, I don't know. The thing, the thing is, is, is the defense played good enough. It wasn't great. There, were, like I said, that that throw Nico had, where he had two guys wide open, and there was still a holding call. I'm like, okay, that's just bad. But overall, they were fine. I mean. The, the one thing that bothers me with Bama's defense, and this is even cropping up the last couple of years during Saban, but Alabama earlier on with Nick Saban, like when I was a younger kid, you know, you were younger, like back in like the early 2010s, mid 2010s, Alabama never gave up a lot of rushing yards. Do you remember Leonard Fournette, that one game with LSU where like Alabama held him to like 12 rushing yards? And Leonard yeah. Fournette was like the top back in the country that year. Yeah, today we gave up 214 rushing yards. You see what I'm saying, man? I mean, yeah. uh, Tennessee's running back Sampson, right? And his last name's Sampson. Uh, yeah. Or Simpson. 100, I, yeah. 194 great. passing yards, and which equals 408 total yards. We gave up that much. Yeah, I mean, Tennessee's running back is not great. I mean, he's a good back. Don't get me wrong. He is a good back. Dylan Sampson, he's a good back. 
but he's not on anybody's like top three to four list of best backs in the country. And Alabama, just a few short years ago, against the best backs in the country, would only give up 15 yards, 20 yards. Yeah. You couldn't run on them. And now you're letting guys that are good, but not great or elite, run all over you. They're certainly That's not the on the Doak Walker award list. Absolutely. That's the problem for Alabama. Their, their defense is nowhere near as good uh, as it used to be, and especially on run defense. Because if you can shut down a team's run defense and, or, or rushing attack because your run defense is so good, you can shut down a team's rushing attack, then you're forcing them to pass the ball every play. You, you're yeah. giving Tennessee options. Because if Nico had to pass the ball every single play, then it probably – would have been a loss for Tennessee because he would have turned it over. But they, Tennessee was allowed to run the ball, and that's on Bama for not stopping the run. And I agree with this comment as well. Yeah. I mean, we let the Georgia game just go to our heads. Yeah. That's what happened. I mean, they, they, they don't look fired up at all. I mean, compared to Saban, I mean, I've actually gone back and watched some of the classic games, the big games with Saban. And the players, man, the players were cool, calm, collected. They were fierce. They were tough competitors, didn't let the moment get to them, and these guys just don't have it, man. I mean, Kendrick Law, I understand why he retaliated, but it's like that. You can't have that. I mean, think about it. That would have helped that Bama have a shorter fourth down. Instead, it was fourth and forever because they had an unsportsmanlike. I will say the Tennessee guy was taunting him to death. Probably should have been an offsetting penalty. But it doesn't matter. Kendrick Law shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have retaliated because, of course, you're going to get in trouble. It's not going to be the guy taunting you. It's going to be your your uh, your push. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, that, that was bad as well. You cannot be pushing people. Like If somebody's taunting you, here's what you do. What you do is if you want to get back at them, you play better against them. You get oh, that yeah, last that's what you do. I mean, you 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 let your play dictate. You let your play dictate everything. So the other team's talking smack, beat them. Yeah. I mean, it's like Indiana, Nebraska. Nebraska could do anything. They couldn't say mm-hmm. anything. Indiana just won. I mean, they yeah. just destroyed them. So it's like there's no talking smack. There's no getting in your face. There's no pushing and shoving. It's just we beat you. Yeah, I mean that's all you gotta do. Like like you said, I mean instead of instead of Alabama getting into it with people, just beat them. Beat Tennessee. Win. You win. You, they have nothing to say. Exactly. <sighs> Both QBs made bad decisions. I mean, Nico could end up becoming a really good quarterback in the future, but he's not that good right now. He is True. not all that good right now. All the hype that he had coming into the season, he's definitely underwhelmed. I mean, I'm not going to put it all on him. He's a young guy. He's going to get better with time, I'm sure. I mean, even Kay Klubnik, he's finally playing a lot better for Clemson than what he was. But, I mean, Nico is definitely not great the, 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 right now. Could get better. The problem with Milrow is that he was better last year, and he's an older guy, and he was thought to be a Heisman favorite. But the thing is, for a brief, he was after that Georgia game, he was a Heisman favorite, Heisman candidate. And he's regressing. I, I still think a lot of it's on the play calling and the coordinators and then Milrow, but still Milrow can't be looking nervous out there and look like he's about to throw up when, no. when, when, when you're, you're a senior, man. I mean, you can't do that. No. Cannot. You, you Good just point as well. You, you have to push the guys back. Like Tennessee's just pushing guys forward, and like Alabama's almost carrying them with them. I agree with that. You, you got to push them back. It, it, that's an effort thing. Tennessee just – a little more effort. Yeah. Tennessee didn't play good either. No. They really didn't. I mean, I I, I mean, I'm not – I mean, if there's any Tennessee fans in, in chat, definitely appreciate you guys for uh, being here. But nothing against your team's performance. But at, at Tennessee, honestly, if I was a Tennessee fan over an Alabama fan, I'll be saying the same thing. Yeah, we won, but we didn't play good. <laughs> you know, we did yeah. not. But I'm, I'm just saying, as a Bama fan for Tennessee, Tennessee did not play well. At the end of the day, they won. But it's not saying much, though. Like, honestly, when Tennessee beat Alabama back in 2022 and they broke off the, the – uh, 
15 game losing yeah. streak. Yeah, they, they broke the losing streak and they uh they bro- they broke the field goal, you know, that whatever it's called, it's not the, the post. They broke the post through to the river. But uh, you know, like literally, uh that was an impressive win for Tennessee. Cuz that was Bama still Bama. Like Bama's defense was regressing, but like their offense was still really good. Still had Saban. That was a classic game. This game, honestly, I mean, this was not a very interesting game. I mean, yeah, it's two great programs and the SEC and all that, but, like, the Alabama-Tennessee game in 2022 was a classic. Yeah. Even though Bama lost, this game was not a classic. No. It's nowhere not, like, near – game at all. It's nowhere near the 2022 game or 1966 or – 1990, where or even we had to no. I mean, like, like Mount Cody, bought, Cody bought the field goal with his armpit. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, like it was a low scoring game, but it was still a classic. This game was not a classic, even if Bama won. Like, because I know, like, some people in chat probably be like, "Oh, well, you're only saying that because Bama lost." It has nothing to do with that. Like, when Bama lost in 2022, I was like, "What a game!" What a game. And it's nothing to do with the points. It's just the way the game transpired. I just, watching both these teams, I did not see great defense. I didn't see, oh, well, the, the defenses are so good that neither team can score. No, it was just poor offense, poor play calling, just poor everything. And Bama had just a little bit more of it. Uh-oh, face freeze again. Tennessee, Missouri. If they do that against LSU or Missouri, Bama's not winning. They're not. Yeah. Alabama's going to have to get better, but I'm not confident they will. I mean, Kalen DeBoer knows he's at Bama now. This is not Washington. you got to do well at Alabama or you will get fired. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, because, like, it's not, it's not us that are going to do that, of course. You know, no, it, I would, it, I mean, I'm not going to fire DeBoer at all or say he should sure. be on the hot seat, but you know how people are. Yeah, I mean, everybody tends to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And like you said the other day, Jeffrey, uh, perception changes. I, I think you said that on Thursday night on the second edition of the call-in show. And I'm and we've had numerous conversations about it on and off air. You know, perception tends to change whether we like it or not. You know, Mike Norvell, greatest thing in the world. Oh, my God, Alabama should hire him to replace Nick Saban. Thank goodness we didn't, I can tell you right now. And Florida State's not too happy with him at the moment. I mean, everybody's, like, yelling for him. There's some people yelling for him to get fired. They're like, whoa, what's his buyout number? What's his buyout number? $64 million for the record, which I I believe he's uh, a little bit above Kale DeBoer, but behind Kirby Smart. I bet you Florida State's wishing they didn't have that little contract extension set up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's insane. And, and Mike Loxley was a candidate for the Alabama oh. job as well. I mean, well, what a the train. Only, yeah, like, that's <laughs> the thing about, like, Mike Loxley. The only reason why he even got considered for any coaching candidacy for as a head coach is because he worked for Saban. Absolutely. If he didn't work for Nick Saban, nobody would have hired him. I mean, seriously, who's going to hire a guy who was 3-22 and 22 at New Mexico? Well, that's why like, Signetti got hired as a head coach because he was a Saban assistant. Mm-hmm. But Signetti wins. Loxley yeah. does even though he won today. Good job, Loxley. But yeah, <laughs> he job. don't win very often. Uh, but still, I mean, yeah. I, I, Kalen DeBoer, no hot seat. None of that stuff.